Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at finding values of inverse trig functions. So down here is the notation that you'll see for these. So sine inverse and arc sine are interchangeable. Cos inverse and arc cos are interchangeable. And tan inverse and arc tan are interchangeable. What this means when I see sine inverse of x, I'm thinking to myself, what value of sine gives me this x value? What value of cosine gives me this x value? Or what value of tan gives me this x value? If I apply this train of thinking to number one, I'm thinking to myself, cosine of what angle gives me negative one? I know that in order to get negative one out, I must be looking at that unit circle. So if I sketch my unit circle really quick, I know that cosine is the x value. The x value is negative one here. This angle is pi. So this tells me cosine of pi is negative one. Cosine inverse of negative one is pi. It's not always gonna be so easy that I get just one value. So if I look at something like number two, cosine inverse is negative a half. This says cosine of what angle gave me negative one half as an answer. So if I look in my A, S, T, C. In order for cosine to be negative, I can't be in the first or fourth quadrant, so I get two answers here. Because my angle theta or x, whatever I wanna name it that I'm looking for, could be in quadrant two, or it could be in quadrant three. So the next thing that I wanna figure out is what reference angle is giving me a value of one half. So the reference angle for a half is pi over three in radians or 60 in degrees, right? Because I know that cosine of 60 is a half or cosine of pi over three is a half. So if my reference angle is 60, what I now need to figure out is, okay, if I'm in the second quadrant with a reference angle of 60, what angle to begin with gave me that reference angle of 60? So in order to figure that out, I'm gonna to have to do 180 minus 60, which gives me 120. So that's one answer here, 120 degrees. My other answer comes from looking at a reference angle of 60 degrees in the third quadrant. So with a reference angle of 60 degrees, I'm here, but that angle theta goes all the way around. So to get that angle, I would have to do 180 plus 60 this gives me 240. So I have 120 and 240 as my possible answers. There's two of them. I'm gonna write those in radians as well. 120 in radians is two pi over three and 240 in radians is four pi over three. We talked earlier and I'll do a quick refresher here that pi over three is equal to 60 degrees pi over four is equal to 45 degrees, and pi over six is equal to 30 degrees. When I'm trying to figure out the other three quadrants for these reference angles, 30, 45, and 60, we had said that if this was theta, the reference angle here was 180 minus theta, here was 180 plus theta, and in the fourth quadrant was 360 minus theta to get those reference angles. If I need to figure out those reference angles in radians, there's another little trick that I can use. So in the first quadrant, I have my three reference angles of pi over three, pi over four, and pi over six. In the second quadrant, to get the angles with these reference angles, all I need to do is take the denominator and subtract one to get what my numerator is. So in the second quadrant, I need to subtract one from the numerator, from the denominator, sorry. I need to subtract one from the denominator. So three minus one is two. So two pi over three. Four minus one is three, three pi over four. And six minus one is five, five pi over six. So this angle has a reference angle of pi over six, reference angle of pi over four, reference angle of pi over three. But these are the actual angles in these quadrants. For the third quadrant, 
I need to add one to each of those denominators. So for this quadrant, I'm adding one. So three plus one is four. So I have four pi over three, five pi over four, and seven pi over six. For that last quadrant, I have to times two minus one to that denominator. So three times two is six minus one is five. So that's five pi over three. For four, four times two is eight minus one is seven, seven pi over four. And for that last quadrant, six times two is 12 minus one is 11 pi over six. So these are really the only answers that I'm gonna get with reference angles of 30, 45, or 60 degrees. That's gonna help us moving forward on the next couple of problems. Number three, sine inverse of rad two over two. So again, this is asking me sine of what angle gives me rad two over two as an answer. I'm first gonna figure out what quadrants I could be in. Since sine is positive, I'm in quadrant one or quadrant two. The reference angle, the angle that gives me rad two over two as an answer is 45 degrees. I'm in the first quadrant, so I'm using that reference angle as one answer. My other answer is in the second quadrant. So for this one, I'm gonna need to do 180 minus 45, which gives me 135. So 135 degrees is my other answer. If I write this in radians, the first quadrant, 45 degrees is pi over four. And in the second quadrant, we just said it's minus one plus one times two minus one. So minus one, four minus one is three. So that's gonna be three pi over four. And you can also just do the conversions from degrees to radians to figure these out as well. But I think remembering this is a little bit quicker. And you'll see as we move on throughout the course, we're mainly gonna be in radians. Number four, tan inverse of negative rad three. This says tan of what angle gave me negative rad three. If tan is negative, I can't be in the first quadrant and I can't be in the third quadrant. So I'm in quadrant two and quadrant four. I'm not even gonna write it in degrees, I'm just gonna write it in radians. So my reference angle for rad three is pi over three, but I'm not in the first quadrant. I'm in the second quadrant, so minus one, so that's two pi over three. And I'm in the fourth quadrant, so times two minus one. Three times two is six minus one is five pi over three. There are my two answers for number four. Number five, this says cosine of cos inverse of zero. I know that zero, one, and negative one come from the unit circle. So again, I sketch my little unit circle. Cosine is the x value. Where is x zero? Pi over two. Yes, there's two of them. I'm just gonna go with one for now. So if I do cosine of pi over two, right? Because this cosine inverse of zero is equal to pi over two. Cosine of pi over two now, okay, cosine pi over two. Well, look at that, that x value there is zero. Cosine of cos inverse is zero. These just canceled each other out, right? They're inverse functions, that makes sense. They cancel each other out. So something to note here. If I have cosine of cosine inverse of x, that's equal to x. If I have sine of sine inverse of y, that equals y. Tan of tan inverse of z is z, right? If I have a function and it's inverse, they just cancel and you're left with whatever variable was there. So that's just something to note. Number six, this is another double one. So I'm gonna go from the inside out. Cosine inverse of rad three over two. So now I'm thinking to myself, okay, what angle when I take the cosine of it gives me rad three over two? That's gonna be pi over six. So I'm gonna replace that with pi over six and then bring down the rest. So now I have sine of pi over six. I know sine of pi over six is a half. There we go. I don't also have to solve this for another quadrant because they told me over here that theta was in quadrant one. So I only had to worry about this one solution for when cosine was equal to rad three over two. They will specify this for you. Number seven, tan of sine inverse of seven over 25. Again, we're gonna work from the inside out. So if I'm focusing first on sine inverse of seven over 25, 
that tells me that sine of some angle, call it theta, is equal to 7 over 25. I then am going to replace this sine inverse with theta. Because this is the answer to this is some angle theta. I then need to find tan of theta. So what I'm actually going to do here is draw a right triangle, name one of those angles theta. If sine of that angle was 7 over 25, that means the opposite side from theta is 7 and the hypotenuse is 25. So opposite is 7, hypotenuse is 25. This is a Pythagorean triplet. So I know that this last side is 24. So again, really here, I'm just looking for tan of theta. Here's theta. I can use this diagram now. Tan is opposite over adjacent. So tan here is 7 over 24. So there's my answer.